<clears throat> Good morning. And I want to start by thanking the committee for their attention on this important work and, of course, for their hard work on behalf of Canadians. My name is Barbara Cartwright and I am the Chief Executive Officer of the Canadian Federation of Humane Societies and I am appearing before you today to bring the support of Humane Societies and SPCAs along with their millions of public supporters across this country for Bill S-214. We are the national organization that represents Humane Societies and SPCAs in Canada, the very organizations that Canadians depend upon not only to care for the abused and abandoned animals in our communities but also to enforce the law advocate for greater care and protection of animals, provide resources, research, and humane education. These local and provincial organizations have served Canadian, the Canadian public for the last 148 years, making them one of the oldest and most trusted social institutions in our country. The CFHS was founded in 1957, in part right from this chamber as one of our three founding members, our three founders, was Senator Frederick A. McGran from New Brunswick. We represent 55 diverse members from all 10 provinces and two of the territories, from the largest urban centers to the smallest coastal communities. We are proud to represent the largest SPCA on the continent, the BC SPCA, and some of the smallest like Happy Valley Goose Bay SPCA and Charlotte County in New Brunswick. For the last 60 years, CFHS has worked on behalf of our members to end animal cruelty, improve animal protection, and promote the humane treatment of all animals. CFHS and our members believe that each animal possesses intrinsic value, remarkable complexity, and inherent dignity, and as such is deserving of respect and moral concern. CFHS advocates for the universal humane treatment, care and protection of all animals, and insists that all animals used by humans be provided with the highest levels of care to ensure their health, welfare, and behavioral standards are met. Based on this, CFHS opposes the use of animals and testing of inessential substances such as cosmetics which can cause unnecessary pain, suffering and death and is not legally required in Canada. CFHS also seeks to reduce animal testing in biomedical and other scientific research which is currently legal, a legal requirement in Canada. The CFHS supports the development and use of non-animal alternatives for all testing and believes that testing companies have a responsible to aid in the development of such non-animal alternatives. Our goal is to restrict the use of animals to those use of animals in research to those areas that do not jeopardize their physical, mental, or emotional well-being while working towards a time when animal research and testing becomes obsolete or unnecessary. Animal welfare and the potential for pain and distress to be experienced by animals in research, testing, and teaching have concerned the general public and thoughtful researchers for a long time, and sadly, Canadian policy on this issue lags behind public opinion scientific and research, community opinion, and other jurisdictions. A word about public opinion, uh, Senator Stuart Olson already mentioned one of the polls recently done by Strategic Council, which found 88% of Canadians agreed that testing new cosmetic products is not worth animals' pain and suffering. I would like to also point out another um, poll that was done by Nanos, a national research firm. They performed a poll on animal testing in scientific research and medical testing in which the majority of Canadians agreed that the welfare of the animal is important in determining what is an acceptable or unacceptable use of animals. It's clear that the Canadian public is concerned about this issue and is concerned about animal welfare. The scientific community in Canada has long recognized the ethical concerns and considerations of using animals in their research, testing and teaching, evidenced by the establishment of the Canadian Council on Animal Care in 1968 to address ethical concerns regarding the use of animals in scientific research, regulatory testing, and teaching in Canada. The CCAC is responsible for setting standards of care and the use, sorry, the care and use of animals in science, assessing and certifying participating institutions, providing education and teaching to, uh, the best, to meet best practices. A certificate of good animal practice is required to receive funding from major research bodies in Canada, such as the Canadian Institute of Health Research, and the Natural, Nash, Natural Sciences and Engineering Research Council of Canada, otherwise known as NSERC. CFHS is a founding member of this organization, the Canadian Council on Animal Care, and sits on its Standards and Guidelines Committee and participates in assessment panels conducted by the CCAC. Through our work with the CCAC, CFHS works alongside industry and understands and appreciates the animal welfare principles associated with animal research and testing. The most important one being the application of the three R's framework. First published in 1959, 
and now the widely accepted ethical principles that are embedded into the core of the CCAC and in the conduct of animal-based science research in Canada. The three R's stand for replacement, reduction, and refinement. For the purpose of this statement and the relevance to S214, the first R is the most important, replacement, which refers to using methods which avoid and replace the use of animals in areas where animals would otherwise have been used. At the heart of this framework, as described on the CCAC website, is the concept that, and the quote, each animal is an individual and should be treated as such. We must be careful that they are not subjected to needless pain and suffering. Excessive numbers should not be used just because they are there. They should not be used at all if an equally suitable model system could be used to obtain the same results. While we fully support the three R's, and CCAC's adoption of them, there are weaknesses to the CCAC that must be mentioned and why Bill S214 is important, including that private organizations or corporations are not required to belong or to adhere to CCAC guidelines. There is not full transparency of the process. It has undergone significant funding cuts and now in part relies on the institutions it is monitoring to fund it. And most importantly, while it embraces and advocates for the three R's, there is no regulatory powers behind it that allow it to compel institutions to comply. In other sister jurisdictions, we've already heard where they've moved, so I'll just focus on the part of my statement that focuses on Canada. Canada in general lags behind sister jurisdictions when it comes to animal welfare legislation in general. We have no comprehensive animal welfare legislation that would govern the use of animals in Canada. Rather, it is piecemeal sorely out of date and often out of step with current animal welfare science. With the case of cosmetic testing on animals, it's no different. Canada's Food and Drug Act prohibits the sale of any cosmetic containing harmful ingredients or contaminants, but does not require animal testing. Yet we still have it happening. Canada lags behind other jurisdictions, as Senator Stuart Olson pointed out. So what's the alternative? There are an increasing number of non-animal alternative testing methods available. Many are based on computer models that simulate human responses. Others involve in vitro alternatives, such as artificial skin or corneas made from human cells. And dozens of large companies, such as Lush, who you'll be hearing from now, have eschewed animal testing of their own accord and still manage to produce new, safe, and highly successful beauty products. They are able to do this by choosing from more than 20,000 existing raw ingredients for cosmetics that have been tested in the past, instead of developing new variations of chemicals that may be tested on animals. In closing, CFHS supports the ongoing and significant global shift towards eliminating the use of animals in cosmetic testing. Bill S214 is an important step forward in this shift toward protecting the welfare of animals, generating innovation, and reducing and ending needless pain and suffering associated with cosmetic testing. It bears taking a moment just to remind you of what those tests can look like. They can involve dripping a chemical substance into the eye of typically a rabbit, which are placed into restraining stocks, and their eyelids are held open with clips, in some cases for days at a time, to keep them from blinking away the test solution. Or their skin, their fur may be shaven, and several layers of skin removed with sticky tape before technicians apply test substances or, and cover over the abraded area with plastic sheeting, often causing intense burning, itching, and pain, and can leave the, part, the patient ulcerated and bleeding. Cosmetic testing on animals is not required, it is not necessary, it causes pain, suffering, and death for what amounts to a beauty product. We support S214. We look forward to a progressive future for the welfare of animals in Canada, and thank you for considering this bill. Thank you. I'll now turn to